Good afternoon, Britain. It is now 1.08. And let's start off with the big news today, that Ofgem's energy price cap will increase by 10%. And that's from the start of October for a typical household in England, Scotland and Wales. Yes, it means households are now set to face higher energy bills this winter. It comes after the regulator had lowered the price cap twice this year. Well, we're joined by GB News reporter Will Hollis because there are a lot of people, particularly pensioners, who are very worried indeed about increasing prices. Will, you've been out and about asking people what it means for them. What does it mean? Yes, well, for the average family, that means that prices will rise by 10%, £149, based on that new assessment. It's about £1,568 a year for a typical household right now. That's going to rise to £1,717. Now, that is less than it was two years ago when we had those massive price rises during the problems with Ukraine and uh, Russia's invasion. But what's very different now about this time is the change in support. Families across the country had £400 worth of support during those winters and particularly the effect uh, that's been brought into question today is the effect on pensioners as uh, winter fuel payments will be taken away from around 10 million pensioners as it moves towards uh, a means-tested system instead. Uh, here where we are in Nottingham, uh, this is a suburb called Arnold. Around a quarter of the 40,000 people that live in this town are of pension age. And I've been speaking to those people as well as working people about how this new price cap rise might affect them when it comes to colder months. I target people that have gone to work all their lives. There's people on benefits that don't need to be on benefits that are getting three, four times more than we are that have worked. I had three jobs at one time when my kids were small. The winter fuel payment for everyone, I think, was a bit ludicrous. I mean, I heard, I, I, I've heard of pensioners who've got private pensions who don't really need it, saying, oh, well, yeah. I just bought a, I don't know, I mean, a guitar freak, I just bought a new guitar, you know, and I think, oh, well, yeah, it's not really supposed to be for that. <laughs> We're already going through challenges with the economic living crisis, so it's not good news. I'm a staunch Labour voter, and I was ashamed to see a Labour government hit the poorest people the most. And... I am partially sighted, deemed blind, and I don't think we'll get a penny. Well, the Labour government says they have to remove those fuel payments to try to fill the £22 billion black hole that they say was left to them by the previous Conservative government. Today, the Conservatives and the Greens are encouraging Labour to reverse that change to the winter fuel payments. But maybe most importantly, the Director of Age UK, Caroline Abrahams, says that this change to the fuel payments is reckless and wrong, particularly in light of that price cap announcement. Very interesting indeed. Thank you so much, Will Hollis, out and about in Nottingham, getting the views of people. Interesting some of the points they raised. Uh, Will there saying that, um, of course, people did get quite a lot of support, a lot of subsidies during COVID and, and the Ukraine as a result of those hiking prices, which we no longer have. I mean, some people would argue that we should means test things a bit more, but I guess it's a question of priorities when you see uh, the government giving in to very, very large pay demands uh, from unions and the like. Um, shall we speak to the energy expert Catherine Porter to make sense of this all. Uh, Catherine, one question that I <laughs> keeps coming back to me is the whole idea of the energy price cap itself um, doesn't seem to be able to control the prices very well. Uh, good afternoon. Well, the price cap isn't there to control the price. It's there to um, effectively make sure that uh, people are being pay uh, charged a fair amount of their energy. Uh, and so it's reflective of the cost of delivering that energy to consumers. If the cost of delivering the energy increases, as it has been doing, uh, then unfortunately pr the price cap will go up uh, reflecting that. And Catherine, Ofgem seems to be blaming external factors for this. An international energy market due to heightened political tensions, extreme weather events is another cited example. So the hands are kind of tied, really, aren't they? What can the government do to make sure that people aren't being really cold this winter? Well, I mean, Ofgem's hands are tied because 
um, it can't control the prices. All it can do is make sure that the price cap is properly reflecting the actual costs. Um, and they're right to say that the costs um, are being very influenced by international factors. What's happening in international gas markets does contribute quite a lot to what's happening with prices. And unfortunately, we may well see another increase in uh, for, from January to March. Uh, and that's because of seasonal effects, because those are cold, the coldest months of the year. But there is also a chance that gas prices could fall uh, because there are certain market trends that would potentially suggest they're a bit higher than they need to be at the moment. Now, in terms of what the government can do, a large amount of what we pay in our bills is actually uh, subsidy costs. Um, and the government could remove those into general taxation. Many of the people who struggle the most with bills uh, don't pay income tax. So this would immediately benefit them because those costs would then be paid by other people who are earning more money um, and it wouldn't be applied onto people's bills. The fact that subsidy costs are recovered through bills and not through taxation is extremely regressive. And that would be a very easy step for the government to take that would actually make quite a lot of difference to people. And presumably in the medium to long term, the only way to get these bills down for the long haul is to increase supply um, in any way to boost the supply of energy uh, so that the price of it uh, comes down. Um, do you have hopes that uh, GB Energy, uh, Labour's new energy company that they want to uh, uh, bring forward, is going to have that impact? They say it's going to drive energy bills down. No, I think it'll do the exact opposite. It's correct that we need to build more domestic supply, but the government is focusing in the wrong place. We need more domestic gas. We need to um, extract as much gas from the North Sea as we can. That doesn't necessarily impact price, but it impacts security. So if there are supply disruptions, we won't be at risk of not having enough gas. Um, and of course, then when you get shortages, that has huge economic damage. Um, the other real problem is that the government seems to be extremely committed to wind. Now, and the wind is being very heavily subsidised. When uh, in the election campaign, Labour said they were going to reduce energy bills by £300. That was based on a study by a consultancy firm called Ember. And they took as a reference price an old price cap that was more expensive. Um, so there was already a couple of hundred pounds baked in at the time of the election. But also they assumed that new renewable generation would be built at the cost of the fourth auction round a few years ago. But now the fifth auction round was a failure for wind. There were no offshore wind bids in the fifth round. And for the sixth round, the price has been increased significantly. So it's gone up from a reference price of £46 per megawatt hour to £73. But that's in 2012 money. So that's equivalent to about £108 wow. today. But current electricity prices are more like £70 to £80. Pounds. So it just doesn't, there's no rational logic which says that we're going to build a lot of wind power at prices higher than today's market price and that that will reduce bills. And particularly you're going to be subsidising that wind. And also recently we've had some periods of very low wind earlier in August. Now to give you an idea of how low, our demand on a summer day, uh, peak demand is something like 32 and a half gigawatts. We had days where wind was contributing less than one gigawatt. So less than one out of 32 and a half of what we need. So that's Gavin, a really... Wind, wind power certainly isn't a silver bullet when it comes to our energy security, nor uh, reducing our energy bills. But we know Ed Miliband isn't too keen on the, uh, on the North Sea. Um, so we'll see what happens. But Catherine Porter, thank you very much indeed. Uh, you're an energy expert. Really great to get your expertise on this.